a lot of Africans come to UK and they become depressed. A lot of Africans come to Europe, America, US, Canada, and they become depressed. A lot of Africans come in this country depending that, or expecting that, life is going to be rainbows and, you know, sunshine and stuff like that. Well, for those who don't know me, my name is Adriano. I was born and raised in Kenya, Africa, in a very small town called Malindi. So, the main reason why I'm coming here is I want to help my fellow Africans and my fellow people who came back from home and they expected life to be good. Somehow, everything went sideways, like myself. Well, hold on. Let me give you a quick how everything started. Born and raised in Kenya with a single parent. I didn't know my dad existed until when I was 18 years old. I always wish that one day my dad would come from nowhere. Somehow I was expecting that, knowing that he will, he will come. I will bother my mom, mom, where's dad, where's dad, where's dad? Because every time people, you know, kids, they will always say, oh, you know, you don't have a dad, you're a bastard. And they used to call me names and stuff like that. It was very painful for a child. And you can understand that because you have been a child and you have seen how bully works. I've been bullied a lot. Oh, dirty European means dirty white man. Oh, mzungu chokora means a dirty white man. And mzungu chokora means a, a homeless white man. I've been called all names. Oh, you don't have a dad, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, I can't blame kids because we were all kids. And we always have something that we're going to mention to other kids. The thing is, somehow I believe that when I'm 18 years old, I will meet my dad. I've said this story, but I'm going to say it again for those who don't know. I used to pray every night. I wake up in the morning before I go to bed, when I go to the toilet, you know, come back three o'clock and I'll pray, God, I pray that one thing, I need to meet my dad before he dies. The thing is, I prayed, f I kept on having the same consistency of the prayer. I want to meet my dad and before he dies. I want to know my dad. I, I would love to know my dad before he dies. And I believed so much. Funny thing is, God has a way of answering prayers. He can say yes, maybe or no. He will tell you yes if it's the right time. No, maybe it's not good for you. Maybe you need to work for it. So somehow I believe that one day I'll meet my dad. This is what happened. When I was 18 years old, I was expecting this year I'm meeting my dad. I had this feeling that I knew I'm going to meet my dad. Guess what? 19, 18 years old come and guess what? I did not meet my dad. I was kind of disappointed, disappointed, but I said, you know what? God, I am never going to give up. I know when I'm 18, I'm going to know my dad. And I'm 18 now. Even if it's December, I just pray that I meet my dad this year because I've been praying for so long. All of a sudden, something random happened. I get to know my dad the same year. April, when I was on holiday. I used to be in a boarding school. In fact, I've been in a boarding school for a very, very long time. I don't know if he's 10 years old. I've been in boarding school maybe 10 years old. I mean, for 10 years. The thing is, I repeated. I remember I repeated, and that's why I don't count two years that I was there and then came back to make it 10 years altogether. But I was there for eight years consecutively until my dad brought me to the UK. When I met my dad, I was 20 years old. That means two years of just back and forth conversation with my dad because, da, Papa, I want to come to you. I want to come and live with you. I want to come to the UK. I used to pray. My dad used to say, my son, finish your education. Life has been strange, but I've never forgot about you. The thing is, I kind of have this sense that, you know, I really want to finish school, but I can't focus because I want to know my dad. I want to meet my dad. I want to come to Europe. My life in Africa is messed up. I'd rather suffer in Europe than suffer in Kenya because them times, 2013, life became so hard. I remember you get to a point now we don't even have money to go and get some food. I would beg this neighbor who used to make chapati. Chapati is like rotis. It's like, you know, such chapati and no chapati is. You know, and I'm thinking, I do everything that, so at least we can have some food. My mom was broke. I was broke and I'm depending on my mom. We don't have work in Kenya. The thing is, in Africa, we, b we believe that we have to finish school and then that's when we're going to get a job. So the main reason why I say a lot of people from Africa come to UK and they become depressed is because I have experienced it. I came to the UK eventually to make the story, the story short of how I met my dad. 
My dad come along and he said, you know what, my son, I am ready to bring you. But just come here with the expectation that life is not going to be what you think. You are going to work hard. But I know you are a survivor. I know you are a warrior. You are going to come here and you are going to kill it. Just learn the system. Follow the education and whatever. Anyways, I was very good in school. So I, f- I left Kenya when I was Form 3. That means I- only one more year to become Form 4. And that means I would have come straight to uni. The bad news is I didn't finish. I say, you know what? I'd rather come to UK. What if my dad ha- dies? You know, God forbid. He's old. What if I never even get to meet him? I will regret my whole life. So I don't care about the education. Education is always good. Came to the UK. When I came here, my life was in shock. Came out of the bus and I realized how rubbish UK was. The building was broken down from where we are. And in fact, a lot of people use, in fact, I was thinking I'm coming to UK to come London. But the truth is, most of people back home in Africa, when you say we are from UK, automatically they say, oh, London, how is London? Or when you say UK, sometimes they say, how is Barack Obama? I used to get that a lot. And I say, you, it's not United, in, it's not you, uh, United States of America, it's United Kingdom. It's completely different places. So, a lot of people now understand I've, I think I don't know what wa- it was, but even myself, I used to think UK is USA for some reason. But anyways, long story short, came to UK and I realized life is messed up. So when I came here, I had nowhere to sl- to sleep. The, s- the house that my dad was living was a very very tiny house, very tiny apartment, not even a house, apartment. Two rooms, my dad and my sister, each with a with a room. And in Europe here, it's not like in Africa where we can sleep with our parents at a big age of 20 or we can share the bed. It's different. Everyone has their own room. From young age, everyone has their own rooms here. So I came here and I lived for six years plus on a sofa. Very uncomfortable for me because lifting weights and then I have to sleep on a sofa. You know, I just live in the living room. I don't have no privacy. I don't have no phone. I don't have no iPad. Actually, let me, I think that's a lie. I had a phone. But I didn't have an iPad, no laptop. And why I was saying iPhone or laptop is because you would want to watch movies at night. And the thing is, what am I going to watch a movie with? We didn't have the, the TV there. So my sister used to watch movies on the laptop. I would have to b- ask my sister's laptop to watch a movie. But the thing is, my sister is in college. She needs the laptop to use it. So long story short, I'm trying to say that life was a mess came here and I was thinking I would make it in life and I started from negative not even zero from negative yeah life was insane so I waited from February because I came here no February I came no I came to from Africa from Kenya to Italy for one week because I have Italian passport and then from Italy me and my dad we left so I came from Kenya to Italy by myself my dad got me the tickets and when I go to Italy, myself and my dad, we came to UK. Okay, that's where my dad ha- ha- uh, rented an apartment with my sister. Go there, I met my sister for the first time. We cried. You know, I, I, I remember the moments, you know, these are the things that I used to pray for. And when I met my dad, I cried the same way, you know, like tears of joy. You just wonder, wow, God is so good. I, he answers the prayer. So, go to the UK now. Met my sister. Life was good. Then again, I realized, hold on, I thought I would come to UK and I will make it. I didn't. So, this is what happened. Went to college that year in September. I was admitted. I started doing uh, A-level physics, physics, chemistry, biology, maths. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a doctor or an engineer because I'm very good at sciences. Until today, I believe I'm so good. If I was to continue with biology, physics, chemistry, I would be a biologist. I would be like a scientist. I am so good. Until today, my dad always say, why didn't you pursue, like, pursue that career? But the truth is, it's too late now. And I understand that you can still learn, but I'm not interested anymore. I will go to that in a bit. Go to the UK. <coughs> went to college. After three months, start the, I started asking for bursary. Why? They say, oh, you need to pay. But the, the, the thing is, I applied for bursary because my sister, they pay for my sister. And we're almost same age with my sister. The thing is, they said, where were you living in the last five years? The answer was in Africa. That's where I went wrong. They did not accept my birthright, and that means I had to quit college. 
I cried again. You know, I get these emotions because I've seen how my mom suffered. I've seen how we suffered. I used to live in a house where it would be raining and I would see the stars. My mom would wake me up at night and I can just hear it like a dream. My son, my son, monangu, monangu, wake up. She would wake me up so that I can move on the bedside because it's raining on the bed and she would fold the mattress like a sandwich and she would put all these buckets so that the rain cannot go on, uh, on the mattress or it, it rains on us. Life was so, so difficult. So when anything like this one that I believe is something that is going to help me to change my life and my mom's life and my family back in Africa and it, go, it gets declined or I fail, I tears just draw down. I don't want to cry, but it just it's like anger, revenge, upset, I ha disappointment. I have everything. I remember making a promise that mom, I will come and I will give you a good life. The thing is, I came to UK and I realized it was the opposite. Started, now I decided to quit college, not because I wanted to do it, but I have no other choice. The thing is, to pay for the uh, air level, it was around £7,000. I don't even have a shilling, not even a one pound, one shilling. I remember going clubbing, I used to ask my dad for, ah, papa. I'm going clubbing now, I'm going out. And I was scared to say, Papa, can you give me some money? I, I'm not used to that. You know, I'm so used to my mom, I can't even tell my dad, Papa, can you give me some money so I can go out? I was not used to that. Okay? And the thing is, I'm using my, my front camera. This is my camera. Uh, so I don't know how, where I should be looking. Uh, where is the camera? Here or there? Anyways, I'm, I'm just going to look at the camera. It's a, <laughs> it's a phone. So, the thing is, I would ask my dad, Papa, I'm going out. And I would expect him to understand that I need money. So, when I do that, he will give me £10, £5, £10, £5. The thing is, my dad, I did not understand them times. But my dad was actually struggling because he's got a house. He needs to, to pay for food. He pays for everything, the bills and everything. And the life in UK is not easy. As we think it is when we are back home. Now I'm looking back and I'm thinking, you know what? My dad was actually so right. You know what? Love for that guy. Love for my dad. I, I, I appreciate him a lot because he told me the truth that life is not going to be easy. I did not listen. Because I know I will survive here. Sometimes I regret that I did not finish my uni. Hey, I'm using this one as well. And it's connected to the phone. It's actually crazy. But yeah, sometimes I regret that Maybe I should have just finished college, I mean, uh, high school and then I come to uni. But long story short, things happen for a reason. So, came to UK now, and now I say, you know what? I have been suffering. I have been struggling. What can I do? I decided to go to work. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to work so I can get money and I will send it to, and I send back home, help my family, and see if we can be able to, you know, survive. The thing is, soon as I got a job, I was working in a sandwich factory. We would stand for a very long line. Sometimes you go there, there is racism. You know, that's the first time I had the word kurva. Hey, kurva, you pissed off. You know, Polish, Russian people, Lithuanian. So much racism uh, and in the fa sandwich factory. Uh, we used to work in a green co company. I hate that company until today. I pass through there and sometimes I just want to go there to see who's the manager, if it's the same guy, just to show them how far I've come in life. But I say what? Well, everything happens for a reason. These are just stepping stones. Every African and everyone who comes in the UK that doesn't have a certificate or a anything to offer, and they live in Northampton, they go to that sandwich factory. Sandwich factory, it's, like it's called Green Co. They employ everyone. It's a sandwich factory for MNS. The thing is, it's so bad in there. It's so, so horrible. They treat people so wrong. But then again, I say, who am I to even complain? Working six pound an hour, six seventy or six eighty. You go there, and the thing is, I never had a car. I can't even afford a car, so I will have a bicycle. I will cycle from home to the camp to the warehouse. It will take me 40, 50 minutes, sometimes one hour, because it's very, very long, a long place. And the thing is, the shift used to be weird. Sometimes we get a shift at 4 o'clock in the morning. They used to just send us random messages. Oh, we have a, a, a shift at uh, 4 p.m. No, 4 a.m. Can you do the shift? They send you the middle of the night. You see, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. The thing is, few hours sleeping, wake up, go to work. Guess what? You go there and you realize so many people pick the shift. And now they say, sorry, my friend, we are too, too booked. We are, it's full. 
now we have to wait until 7 a.m or go back home what i'm trying to say is life was it was insane but i say you know what i'm a survivor i'm from africa i'm strong i will survive do that job after a while i quit that job next year uh the year after that i went to another college and then they say where were you living in the last five years i say italy okay uh doing pa- uh, personal training i did personal training and the thing is i wanted to go to uni go there and a big mistake guess what the personal training is not a course to get you to uni it's to get you to become a worker as a personal trainer same time my girlfriend at that time which is gabby everyone knows her now Gigi beauty she got pregnant that means i have a child well what can i do go to uni or college and come back and you know in fact i can't go uni is i go college again do another course that will take me to uni or look after the kids decided to start working working in warehouses life was miserable it was tiring i would send money back home and i get to a point i can't send anything because i'm trying to do my best but the cost of living everyone knows i don't have a car i don't have nothing i have a child I live with my dad i can't even live with my girl my girlfriend with my child the thing is it was so difficult my wife was living at her my wife now which was a girlfriend at that time she was living with her parents i would live with my parents in a small house tiny tiny little bed in uh, when i remember how she used to come home and that bed is like a not even a single bed it's a small bed it's like if i sleep like this right now i put my hand here and here the whole bed is here so we used to li- sleep because I cuddle her and I cuddle my daughter. And you do this, you fall or you fall. But these are stories that make a man. Where am I going with this story? This story is just to help everyone that comes from Africa understand that UK is not what they expect to be. Whether you have a dad or mom, you come here and you will struggle, you will suffer. You come to UK, you need to be prepared mentally. Mentally, because I, I, whether you become successful or not, whether you come to UK or not, whether you stay in Africa or not, is not going to affect me with any way. So I'm just telling you the truth. I'm, I don't, it's not even a gatekeeper. I don't want you to come to UK because like I said, I have things going on. Now that's my new company for my, my supplement. Okay. I do my own thing. I have my own businesses. But this is, <laughs> in fact, let's not even talk about that one for now. What I'm trying to say is, whether people come t- from Africa to UK or America, or whatever, it doesn't affect me with anything. So I would pray and love for you to come from Africa to UK or Europe or I don't know. Because now UK and, uh, and Europe is completely different thing because of Brexit. Uh, UK took themselves out of Europe, so they are not part of Europe. Or America or, I don't know, Canada, Qatar, uh, or anywhere. What I'm trying to say is when you come from home to these countries, don't have an expectations that life is just going to be all of a sudden you've made it. You will come in here and you will work like a donkey. Be prepared to be lonely. Once you become like so familiar to what loneliness means, you will survive. Know that you're going to be lonely in this country. You will have no friends because every time you're trying to go out to the friends, they either broke or you are broke. And that's normal. Paycheck to paycheck is normal. So you cannot go out because you're either broke or you don't have time. When you go to work, you don't have time. But then again, the more you work, the more you're be- being taxed. Life in UK is a system. Life in Europe altogether is a system. You work hard, you get paid, you pay more taxes. You work less, you don't have enough. That means you're just going to have to work hard, extra hours over time so that you can pay more taxes. Good for the government. You see? The thing is, I ask myself, I am so smart. I become so good at everything I do. I started YouTube and my YouTube was doing well. I would get up to 6,000 a month for my YouTube channel. 3,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds. But that was still not enough because I have big ambitions. I want to do I want to do bigger than this. We got to a point and I say, you know what? At least I have a YouTube channel and I'm working as a support worker. Look at this. This is a scar. See this? This is a scar. These are scars on my hand. I don't know if I have another one. Look. These are scar on my hand from people with mental health. These are crazy people. They want to kill you. They want to gorge your eyes. They want to scratch you. These are scratches. They want to bite you. The thing is, it's so easy for Africans to have these jobs. He- um, health and care. Uh, nursing. Cleaning after old people's bum hole. Cleaning their poo. Wa- w- w- cleaning their houses. The vomit and everything. 
it's not and this is not me coming here and saying these jobs are no good these are the jobs that made me who i am today because i have all the experience these are the jobs that paid for my bills these are the jobs that got me to be able to study and know how to edit and do everything at work because i realized if i'm at work at night doing night shift and i clean up their, their houses clean these people if they are dirty get them to go to bed i have the whole night by myself now i'm by myself time to know the knowledge and the system i became a support worker for a very long time because that was quite a good job compared to working in an office because you realize working in an office as a backless bank and somebody who works in a care home is almost the same pay backless i don't want to hear the manager oh why are you late did it care care home jobs i was always by myself at night no one to talk to my english didn't even improve because i have no one to speak to i would do 12 hour shift sometimes 14 hour shift sometimes i would even commute to another city to live with the people with mental health for one month life was so difficult and i appreciate that because it's made me who i am today so <clears throat> if you're from africa and you're uk us or anywhere you need to understand one thing in order for you to succeed in order for you to make the money like you was planning to do in the initial stage and be able to send money back home in africa i was looking at the time because i need to go get my kids very soon daddy duties but no i still have time but what i'm trying to say is for you to be able to make it in europe uk usa canada all this country you need to know the system just to know in the system the problem is no one ever told me you need to learn about the system my dad said you need to learn you need to become a doctor you need you know an engineer you know my dad is an old man he's 72 years i think now you know but he's he's looking good at his age he's still suff <laughs> suffering <laughs> he's still struggling with his, his his own life i'm struggling with my own life my wife my dad and everyone everyone ha struggle with their own life you know we all have everyone in this country struggle with their own thing even if you are making money you struggle because you realize if you don't work hard or you don't let your company work hard you're going to fail the bills are going higher the bills up here the rent goes up here but your wages stay the same so unless you have your own company and that's the good thing my dad has his own company now he's he makes food very nice italian food my wife has her own company to do with beauty and now you, you see she's got her own channel or whatever and now she's something good is coming for her side i don't need to say it. she will tell you by, by herself when this time is ready for me now i have something good working out for me you see these are all my supplement company and i have it in front of me this is one of my this is my studio or i don't know what i should call it it's all the way in my house what i'm trying to say is now i'm making the same amount of money i used to make in the whole year with overtime in just under a month not even in one month under a month sometimes i'm making money until i'm thinking why was i not doing this from the beginning i would have had a mansion back home you know i would have helped everyone back home if i was to make the same money now i'm making like back then for the last eight years in uk i would have been somebody now but i just discovered recently and that's why one of my video i said i am quitting youtube i remember whoever follows me uh, know that video and if you do comment and let me know i said i'm quitting youtube because i don't want to be dancing not that i don't like dancing but i don't feel like hey I <laughs> the mic I don't feel like I was providing value so now I'm coming on my YouTube channel with valuable content I want to help everyone who was uh, who was or is in the same position as how I was I was working full-time job with YouTube and still negative bank accounts it's crazy I have been declined my card has been declined so many times when I'm going shopping because I don't have enough you end up getting a car you get a phone finances everything you thinking i'm making three thousand on youtube i'm making one thousand on, on on a normal job and still is not enough luckily i said you know what i am gonna quit youtube even though it's making me money and i'm gonna work in this care home job only to learn the system so i asked one of my one of my friends i said bro what are you doing man because i see you living a good life he said oh yeah i do ecom ecom means e-commerce selling things online I said i've tried that i opened my businesses before and uh, people who follow me they know i used to have this turtle thing it's a turtle logo whoever follows me from a long time knows 
yes, so I fell miserable in that business. I lost a lot of money. I gave up. I say, man, I don't know everything. It doesn't work out for me. But I never give up. And I say, teach me. He said, I cannot do it, but I had a mentor. A mentor is somebody who you pay and they teach one-to-one about whatever that you want to learn. If it's to do with fitness, mental health, I don't know. It, for me, it was, I want to learn how to make money online. So, I paid this guy 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds. I wanted to learn online. One-to-one. And I'm thinking, how am I going to fail for this? I cannot fail. I am going to quit my YouTube. I will take my money from YouTube. I will just upload here and there. And I will take the money and I will pay this guy. So that I can learn the skills that is going to help me forever. Guess what? Now you are looking at somebody who has his own supplement line. An African guy who didn't even know my English is still... My English, I think, is quite good. My accent is still very African. Live in the UK. Now I have people working for me. I have warehouses. Think of this. Warehouse. I have people working for me. I am making... At least ten thousand pounds. At least I don't want to say how much I'm making, but just to know that I am making good money. Thank goodness, more than ten thousand pounds a month. It's not from YouTube views because YouTube views is not gonna give you enough. But it's a starting point. What I'm trying to say is, if you come from Africa to UK, you have the opportunities, but you just need to know how. What do I do for those who people are asking? A lot of people have been asking me this recently. And a lot, and a lot, a lot, a lot. The thing is, I sell things online. I find a problem and I come up with a solution. The solution is what's giving me money. So, I have digital products I sell to solve a problem. I have physical products that solve a problem. I teach everyone how to do this. I've been doing this for who follows on my TikTok. My TikTok is called Duro Forever or King Adriz. I have two. The thing is, a lot of people don't take action. So, here I am coming on my YouTube as a testimony that, yes, you can born from nowhere. Rain is going to come in your house. You're going to suffer. You're going to struggle. But the thing is, if you decide you want to have a good life, you will. Because the willpower is stronger than anything else. Now, I am living a very comfortable life. I am very grateful. God is always good and he's giving me all these chances to learn. I wish I learned earlier, but then again, my mindset was not there. So, to give back, I have created a course. Uh, for those people say, oh yeah, it's all about selling courses and whatever. Oh, th- he makes money because selling courses. No, that's not the only way. Yes, I am making money on the course. I am. I have to admit, I have over 2,000 members paying. The thing is, am I scamming people or am I lying to people? No. The truth is, I had to pay somebody £10,000 to teach me. Why would I now teach people for free? Because creating videos and content is money, is time, is effort. I have come up with the whole strategy. How, what the guy taught me for £10,000 and I teach people in a fraction, not even a fraction of that. People paying per month. You pay per month, you go and you learn every single thing. Out of everyone that is on the course, no one is even complaining, say, bro, oh yeah, it's too expensive. No. They know that this is valuable and that's why I have created a community. It's a, it's a, it's a community. It's a very small community. I don't want to accept so many people because everyone in the community has one goal. Make money and help their family. Help themselves. Ra- uh, avoid paycheck to paycheck. The same goal is to become a better person, either a man or a woman. So, right now, I I was, I don't know if you can see, let me do this. You see? Um, I was recording a video on how to make money anywhere in the world. Hey, hey, hey. I was, yeah, making a course how to make money uh, anywhere in the world. But the thing is, my internet all of a sudden stopped. And I said, let me take my phone and record this video. Because I don't want to waste no time. So, I'm going to have a course on how to make money anywhere you are in the world. I will make a course on how to make money with little as zero pounds to start a business and make money. I have already a course on how to make money selling on TikTok shop. TikTok shop is making people millionaires and they don't want you to know. It's a secret. They're hiding. They don't want you to know because you'll be a competitor. 
Amazon and TikTok are in a competition. TikTok now is copying Amazon, but it's better now. That means if you're a seller, you will make money. So, I said this on one of my videos. Join for free, guys. I will teach you for free. The first time I, was, I opened the course, a lot of people didn't even join for free. <laughs> and now I said, you know what? Fine. I started charging people. People started taking action. And they re I realized people don't like free stuff. So, if you want to get in a position where you can help your family, where you want to be selling on TikTok shop or making money or anywhere you are in the world, join my course. My course, you're going to learn from A to Z. How to get started, how to open your own logo. I mean, how to create your own logo with the AI. How to open your own company. I have limited companies because limited companies, I pay less taxes. I choose how much I want to pay taxes because I can claim everything that I am using. These ones here, business expense. Microphone, business expense. Laptop, lights, everything. The rent, I am here, business expenses. Living in a nice house, business expense because I'm using my house as where inventory, where I'm storing my products. I'm using my house, the electricity that I'm paying, I'm using for recording videos like this. Laptop for editing. So, once you understand the system, you would pay less taxes. And when you understand the system, you are not cheating anyone. This is how the system was made. That's why you see people, millionaires, they don't pay taxes, they have G-Wagons. Why do you think it's G-Wagon? Because they, they, it's a tax write-off, you know? So. In my course, you will learn every single thing you need to know. Join now. I'm going to put links on my description. Join, learn how to make money from your African brother. I am here as an honest man. Transparency. UK, life, or Europe, America, you will suffer if you don't have your own business. I am telling you the truth. You come to UK, you will suffer. Unless you have your own business. But because you don't know the system. You will waste a lot of time on YouTube searching videos. Guess what? No one is going to tell you all the information because it's a long process. I can't even do a video here for free. All of it is going to take me a long time. In fact, when you join the course, you realize there is so many modules you go to step by step. Okay? It's a long process. But when you read and understand that it's a process, but when you learn and you have something to follow a guide it becomes easier and quicker for you you are not going to waste money and time and most likely you're going to be successful because it's a method and it's a proven method you don't need to invent a wheel that's the truth anyways with that being said i came to uk when i was 20. now i am grateful i am very grateful i made the right choice to come to the uk no f continue with education I don't have no f uh, loans in school I live a better life now. Thank goodness. I'm working hard. I want to help everyone else. In this account, I am going to try to give as much value as possible. Even free value. I will be showing people how to open businesses and whatever. But with, with due time, I will be doing that. But because I'm busy, slowly, slowly. The thing is, you won't be able to have all the full information because, like I said, it's too long. I cannot do that. The only way to do that is the course you can learn every single thing from A to Z. However, if you don't have money, stick around. Maybe one day after one year, I'll be able to piece everything together, which you'll still be confused because when something is not consistently, you will struggle. You will struggle because I don't want to waste time. Every single day, I'm getting paid. Every single day, I'm getting paid. If I stay one month without getting paid, that's a big waste. So I don't want that. So I take action and I'm quick, speed, fast. I see something is working, I try it and I do it. That's what I am now. That's what you should be doing. Take action now. Let this be a sign God has given you. Do you understand? Because like I said, you have your own YouTube videos. Th the views on the videos on the YouTube videos is not going to make you rich. You have to be sponsored or whatever. And you have to be lucky among people like Mr. Beast. Now, brands don't want to use influencers. Influencers are broke. I am. I was an influencer. And I can tell you now, influencers are broke. Because companies don't want to pay a lot of money. Companies are using AI. Companies are using UGC. User generic content. Smaller videos on TikTok. They are giving people commission. So, you realize influencers are broke. Why do you want to be a YouTuber? Views. Even this video, I'm going to monetize it. Why? Because it's... 34 minutes now. I'm not going to even edit this because I don't have time. I'm just going to be the honest, the honest truth. 
I will monetize this video because this is 34 minutes of my time is worth money. I need to get paid because if I don't get paid, the house is not being paid. M my family is struggling and then my business, I cannot be taking YouTube money and not use it because I want to make money so I can help back home. I come a long way and I want to make sure my family live in a good way. You know, if it was just me and myself, then I don't need anything more in life. I have made it. I'm successful as hell. But when I come to me, my family, my mom, dad, sisters, wife, kids, my friends in need, <laughs> you know, my, my extended family, I realize I am not nowhere near where I want to be because if I decide to help them as much as I want, I will fail. I won't be able to do it. It's a big commitment. So, like I said, you know exactly what you need to do. If you live in the UK, Europe, and you have a TikTok shop and you want to learn or you want to learn how to make money, join my course and you will learn every single thing. Let's support one another. I am not even expecting 1,000 people because the course has been there for time. Only 2,000 people. 2,100, I think. 2,100 people. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is only few people who take action are the ones that are going to see results. And for me, even if it's two people who are going to join, they're willing to put in the uh, work. I'm happy. I will be there to help them. Okay? So I shall see you and make sure you like this video, share with a friend. Let's support one another. Let's go hard. Let's put content that has meaning, not just content that it just give you cheap dopamine that it's not giving you any value in life. Then it's time for me to go get the kids and come here, continue with the courses. Guys, I got much love for you. Thank you so much for my supporters. I am here because of you. There is a YouTube channel there. You see that one? For 100,000. There, 100,000. Ha! The thing is, I've stopped making these videos because I don't have time. I am now a business owner. I am an entrepreneur. I want to make money. That's my goal. Make money, help the people. When I get enough money, you know, now I know, okay, I have money to share and spare. Send it to the family. I would, in fact, my goal, I want to open an um, orphan home in Kenya. I want to have so many things, but God willing, everything will fall in place because he is the only one that knows my true intention. So, with that being said, guys, much love. And you know, it's King Adriza. You don't have to like my accent, but you can like my video. Can you not?